What's up guys, this is Jules, and this is going to be a Stamina DK PvP build for the Homestead patch in ESO. This is currently what I am running on my Stam DK. I switched from two-hander bow to two-hander sword and board, I think a couple of days ago. So I just figured I would upload this just to give you guys kind of an idea. So just to kick it off, we are a Redguard Dragon Knight. We are a Vampire. We are running the Thief Mundus and max health and max stamina food, 150 CP. Our max stats, we're looking at almost 10k max magicka, 25k health, which is pretty standard for Cyrodiil in this patch, and almost 44k max stam. Our stam recovery is 652, which is extremely low, but that's okay because we're going to get our sustain through other sources. Our weapon damage is at 2483, completely unbuffed, and our weapon crit is at 35.9%. If we use Igneous and Rally, that's going to put our weapon damage at 3086, just under, just under 3100, and that's also going to increase with the sets that we're wearing and the Wrath passive from Heavy Armor. So moving on to gear, we're wearing 5-piece Fury. This is all Heavy Armor and all Impen. This gives us max health, max stamina, weapon damage, and it gives us weapon damage based on the damage that is incoming to us. So it increases by 30 weapon damage for 6 seconds, stacks up to 25 times. This set is extremely good if you're outnumbered and you're being basically zerged down, which let's be honest is constantly all the time. So you get more damage basically the more outnumbered you are, which is a very nice attribute of this set. This is probably the best damage set for heavy armor for Stam in this patch. Um, it's definitely better than Black Rose now that the Black Rose has changed and you don't really need the sustain of it. And it also, in my opinion, is better than 7th Legion. Uh, Fury has become a staple of a lot of stand builds, so I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with this set. Moving on to the other 5-piece that we're wearing, we're wearing Hulking Draugers. This synergizes really well with Stam DK because, of course, our Igneous gives us back 5% max Stam. Um, so increasing our max Stam can only be in our best interest through the use of Igneous and also for Battle Roar. So the set gives nothing but max stam. I was lucky enough to get two pieces of Impen in it. This drops out of Dire Frost's Keep. I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of a pain in the ass to farm. However, it's definitely worth it. I think the set really, really, really synergizes with Stam DK extremely well. So we wear our head and shoulders, our hulking, and also our jewelry. We have three weapon damage enchants, and everything is gold. Moving on to the weapons, we have Agility. This is going to be the best two-piece for max stam. You could run Morkeldin if you don't have Agility, but Agility is better. It does give more max stam. I have a Defending Sword and a Reinforced Shield. I would like to probably go Sturdy or Impen if I could, but the Shield I had already golded out, so Reinforced will do fine. And then our main bar, our damage bar, is going to be our Maelstrom Greatsword Sharpens and damage health poisons nine. So that is all of the gear guys. Now we're gonna hop into skills. For skills, we are looking at Noxious Breath, Rally, Dizzying Swing, Crit Rush, Reverse Slice, and Dawnbreaker of Smiting. Noxious Breath, of course, is our major fracture. This reduces the target's physical resistance by 5280. This is very, very good on a Stam DK. Be careful when you're aiming it. Make sure that you look at the target's um, health bar and see whether it's cracked or see whether the debuff has actually applied to them. It can be kind of finicky with that. Of course, we have Rally. This is our major brutality and also our burst heal and a hot. Dizzying Swing. This is going to be our main damage and a CC. Crit Rush. This is our gap closer. And then Reverse Slice. This is uh, pretty standard. This is our execute. And it's also going to do splash damage to the enemies in the area of the target. We're running Dawnbreaker as Smiting. I know that Leap was changed this patch in order to allow you to leap while you are being rooted and also to make it undodgeable. However, I still prefer Dawnbreaker as Smiting. I know that it is lower initial damage, but I think that the dot that it does more than makes up for the fact that it doesn't do as much initial damage because Dawnbreaker almost doubles itself in its dot. Um, actually, more than doubles itself in its dot, and it applies to a bunch of different people. Um, it's just something that I've grown really uh, comfortable with, and I think that the damage of it overall is better in outnumbered situations than a leap would be, and that's just my opinion. Um, I know a lot of DKs that run leap and are very successful with leap, and that's just their playstyle, and that's just what they prefer. But 
In my preference, I like Don Brieger with Smiting. Moving on to the off bar. We're running Resolving Vigor. This is our hot out of the Alliance War. Shuffle, this is going to be our major evasion and also our snare, uh, snare removal and snare immunity. This comes from medium armor, of course. This was nerfed this patch, however, it is still very good and you can basically barely tell the difference. We're also running Rearming Trap. This comes out of Fighter's Guild. This is going to immobilize enemies and it's also going to give us minor force, which increases our crit damage by 10%. Uh, Rearming Trap is very good outnumbered. Uh, you can kind of, if you have a bunch of people on you, you can lay some traps down. Uh, people get caught in the traps. They're not able to constantly be on top of you and you're able to kill somebody perhaps while somebody else is still trying to get out of your trap. It's definitely very, very good outnumbered. Uh, it's a skill that I really like. Ignea Shield, this is our major mending and this is also our Magicka to Stamina conversion. This is obviously a staple of the build. If any Stam DK build, you definitely need this. The reason why we're in heavy armor, um, or one of the main reasons why we are in heavy armor is because of this skill. Uh, because we gain back so much Magicka, we're able to convert that Magicka immediately to stamina. So be constantly um, draining your Magicka resources in order to convert them to Stam. That's part of the sustain of the build and of most Stam DK builds that run heavy armor. So Igneous is going to be what you spend the majority of your Magicka on. However, Volatile Armor is going to give us Major Resolve and Major Ward. This is also a Magicka skill. However, it has a 20 second uptime. So you don't need to really waste your resources too much with this. However, this is also very good for Nightblades because it does do a dot. However, um, of course, the dot is going to be very, very minute on a stand build. As you can see, uh, 2952 magic damage over 10 seconds. We're talking hundreds of damage on a stand build. It's, it's very negligible, but um, it's worth it for the dot for Nightblades. And then the ult that we're running on this bar is Corrosive Armor. This caps incoming damage to 3% of your max health. It does a little tiny bit of poison damage. And the important thing about this ultimate is that it, when your attacks... Sorry. <laughs> when it is active, your attacks are going to ignore 100% of your enemy's physical resistance, which is what makes this ultimate so good. It is kind of expensive. I don't use it that much. I usually end up using Dawnbreaker. However, it is very good in clutch situations when you are extremely outnumbered. A couple of options for this off bar for the one hand and shields. Um... You know, as you can see, the two-hander is our main bar. That's our main damage bar. So, you know, a lot of people that do run Stam DK, uh, Sword and Board main bar, it's a very strong setup. Um, if you don't know him, Yo Yui is a very strong Sword and Board Stam DK. Um, he runs it as his main, uh, his main weapon. However, with this build, it's more of just a back bar for the tankiness and for the extra um, Stam in order for Igneous and stuff like that. So... It's really just used as a buff bar more than it is as a damage bar. But some options if you did want to go some more of the skills of the one hand and shield line. You could go reverb bash. Looks like I don't have this on my EP but I do have it on my DC. You could switch this out for trap beast if you like it. Um, it is a heal debuff. It is a CC that you are able to get off without um, any kind of anything getting in the way like you could with wrecking blow. Um, for instance if you're talented or rooted or something like that. The Reverb Bash could work very well instead of Trap Beast if that's your playstyle. And then the other one would be Spell Wall, which is the ultimate. Um, you could replace this for Corrosive Armor. It is half the cost of Corrosive Armor, so it is very, very good. You also reflect all projectiles cast at you. It's a very, very tanky ultimate. I still prefer Corrosive Armor because of the Resistance Ignore. And I think it allows you to go a little bit more offensive. Um, and Shield Wall to me is a very tanky skill. It's definitely very worth it. It's it's so good, it's borderline broken. Um, but I like the duration of Corrosive Armor and I like, like I said, the physical resistance being ignored. So that's why I go with Corrosive. But those are two options and that fits your play style, then that totally works. All right, so that is pretty much all for the skills. Now we're just gonna hop into CP real quickly. First for our blue tree. We have 10 into Bless to buff our healing. We have 50 into Precise Strikes to increase our damage and healing crits. And we have 40 into Piercing to increase our physical pen. While we do already have Major Fracture from Noxious Breath, we do just want to kind of increase that physical pen a little bit more just to hit a little bit harder because we are in heavy armor and we are losing that that we would have otherwise if we were using medium. 
Of course, we're going to have 100 into Mighty. Increases your physical poison and disease damage. Moving on to the Red Tree. 63 into Resistant. 70 into Hardy. 50 into Ellie Defender. You can put a little bit less into your Ellie Defender because DKs naturally have spell resistance. 17 into Quick Recovery. Moving on to the Green Tree. 100 into Warlord. 17 into Arcanist. 10 into Tenacity. And 73 into Tumbling. So that is pretty much the entire build, guys, um, from A to Z. It's very simple. Um, it's very easy. Uh, maybe not to acquire, but um, it is a pretty easy play style in general. Um, and it, it really definitely works off of being outnumbered and using basically things like Fury and things like Trap Beast to kind of turn the tables in your favor as far as being outnumbered. So I hope that this is helpful to you. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, just leave a comment below um, or contact me on Twitter, on Twitch. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a great day.